you know, I track you down at, at Oshkosh and I say, you know, well, what do you, where do you build these things? Well, we got this little place, so I come away up to this little place, and you're in the middle of nowhere out here. <laughs> we are. So, yeah. So right now we, we're in the, I guess, the assembly section of the uh, of the uh, process. Yep. Yep. Just got her jigged up and starting to build the cabin and fuselage. Uh, so, like, you're, uh, this is all welded fuselage, correct? Uh, what, well, we're using aluminum in the fuselage rather than... All welded 6061, T6. Now, is this the uh, HP model or is this the ultralight model? This is the ultralight. Okay. We're still several behind, so we're, we're still building ultralight, trying to get caught up with our orders. So, how long would it take you to put one of these together, then, as far as the welding of the fuselage goes? The one we were getting ready for Oshkosh, we built the entire plane start to finish in 28 days. That was the best we've done so far. Two. So it, it takes about a month then to get one basically yeah. ready to go? Well, so it depends on how many loader breakdowns you have. Depends on how many, <laughs> how many outside, uh, outside problems we have, how many airboats we try to squeeze in while yeah, we're at it. Because we've got airport st airboats stuck back into the we, corner We here. build them on the side just for grins. And, uh, something we like to do too, it's fun. And we, we got a little engine over here on the stand as well. So, I mean... Uh, That's a hopped up Generac. That's a 50 horse model. It's, it's been tweaked and tuned. I haven't heard about the 50 horse model. When did we get into, how did we get extra power on it? Uh, we've been, a couple years we've been running it. It's just a matter of raise the compression a point, advance the timing a little, do a little smoothing of the cleaning inside have, the head. We have a, a new uh, camshaft ground for it too. We, we have our own custom camshaft ground, a little bit more aggressive we, headers. We took the same grind that we use on our VW engine and, and had it transferred to the, the small engine. The camshaft grind, and we have a guy in Indiana that grinds those camshafts for us. So uh, you're bringing the engines, I guess, from the Generac factory, and then then doing the modifications on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we buy them on a pallet, eight at a time. Uh, but you're not just using them for the ultra industry. It looks, we've got airboats. What else do we use them on? Uh, for us, that's it. We run we run them on the our ultralights. A lot of the. Uh, uh, aerodrome aircraft, ultralights. Little airboat there. Little airboats. We've got about three sizes of the airboats. We run the 40s and 50 horse on. And when we go to the biggest, we, boy, we build several bigger boats. We run the VW on the biggest ones. Now, are you building the whole boat itself or are you just supplying the engine? I buy the hull. I buy the hull here locally in Missouri. And then I build the shrouds, the rudders, the seats and sticks and all the controls. We buy an empty boat hull, do the rest. Now what are they using those for? Fun. That's all there. There's not a commercial purpose where people is. Oh, nope. well, this one here is a poor boy's jet ski. That's what I call it. It's about half the price of a jet ski, and you don't get wet. So <laughs> that's yeah. our that's our big selling point. It's half the price, and you don't get wet. Yeah, we have uh, people that use that a similar boat to that in Canada for uh, harvesting rice. Mm. Uh, they have a little unit that they put out in front of it, and uh, they'll power it with a 503 to a 582 Rotax mm -hmm. engine. We run that. That's just a one manner there, just strictly a one man boat, and we run 33.6 on it the other day, mile an hour. So it really gets it, that motor. It's a hoot. It's direct drive. It's nothing fancy. It's pretty low cost. We we're having a lot of fun with it. We hope to build a bunch of them. And, and this is the uh, the swing here. This is the one that uh, you had in Oshkosh. Uh, no, this is a this is an older customer plane. We've been out a while. So, uh, how many of the uh, swing wings have we got out in the flying now? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven of the current new production. Wait, we did some design changes to There's them. A pro there's two prototypes, and then after that, we've got eleven, pretty well just alike. Yeah. So, and uh, this is number twelve. And, we and, we're, and we're backed up by the Sonder for over a year now. Yeah, about 10 behind. I think 10, 10 good solid customers behind. Now, are these customers uh, coming in from advertising? They come in for word of mouth? They come in for magazines? Where, how are people finding out about you? It's just a little of all of it. Quite a bit of word of mouth. Uh, Oshkosh does a lot of good for us. We we'll usually have three, three to four orders at Oshkosh, you know, after we get back. Uh, people will call and say, I've seen you up there. And, I've been thinking about it. I think I want one. Several people just stop by. Stop by. They've seen us or heard about us. And just come by and just check us out. 
And how's the uh, high uh, horsepower version coming along? Real good. It's ready to be inspected. Pretty excited about it. Uh, now you're talking about the VW now. The VW powered one. Yeah. Not the high horsepower one. No. The, no. the VW powered ones. Uh, it's we're ready for our inspection and uh, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be what you're putting out, uh, 125, 130 yeah, horsepower? Yeah, um, uh, right now, about a 110 horse engine on it. So we hope to get a little more and a little bigger prop still yet. Uh, and I understand you've been uh, approached by a couple of people for uh, tug towing. For tug towing, yeah. They like the high horse and the uh, the lightweight, single seat. Do we have to add some strength into the tail or into the tow arrangement to do that, do you think? I don't know yet. Probably... Uh, I don't know, it's pretty strong already. We use you know, two inch tubes on it. Uh, it's pretty stout air. I don't think it'll need anything. Yeah. Just, a, uh, just a bridle, some kind of a bridle to pull from. A, trip, a, a latch, uh, so. a disconnect. Do you know anything about our, our hybrid electric? That we put oh, it's this hybrid electric. I haven't heard anything about a hybrid electric yet. It's in the, it's in the works. We're working on, it'll be two different, two different things we're looking at it one is a, a, a true hybrid where you have a, a gasoline engine doing a, a, a small a light horsepower in fact the one we have here is an 18 horsepower v twin just like the big twin only baby Eight, baby brother a small one a little a little 18 horse v twin and then we combine that with a 28 horsepower electric motor and a set of batteries and and on, on, the, on the hybrid, the, the batteries will just be primarily for takeoff assistance, so we have the horsepower of both of them for takeoff. And then while you're flying around, the excess horsepower above what it takes for cruising will be used to recharge the batteries, so that when you come back and land, by then the batteries will be fully recharged and ready to go again. Also, if you have an engine failure, the batteries will be adequate to uh, Maybe bring you home from five miles or something like that, but uh, at least get you back to the airport. Or if it failed on takeoff, it, the, the uh, electric is adequate to take you around and bring you back. Um, I mean, if you're past the point of no return, it's okay. You go ahead and go on around, come back on electric only. And how long do you figure it's going to be before that's actually flying? Then? Should have been flying already. We have everything ready to go. We, we had it ready the Sunday before Oshkosh, but we didn't think we had enough testing time on it to bring it. Yeah, we had it ready to fly, uh, but I just didn't have any time to, uh, to really check it out. I didn't want to go up there and, and demonstrate it without having some time on it. And we only had one week left, so I, I put it on hold. And we haven't got back on it since we come back from Oshkosh. But that's, that's the first version. That's the hybrid. And then we would like, uh, as soon as the better batteries are available, uh, the full electric one, of course, would be the ideal, and uh, we'll be ready for that too. But we actually need a little bit, little bit better, a little bit lower cost and better output on the uh, lithium. If that new lithium lithium air battery comes through, then that'll be the checker. So. Yes. But the lithium ion right now, Gotta you can do it. Affordable it. For you can do it, but it's it's so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Ultralight buyers are in. The we're on the low end. We got to stay affordable. We're going to try to on the on the electric and the hybrid. That we're going to try to stay uh, 103 legal, so that there'd be no problem with the with the registrations. So if somebody wanted to get to in touch with you, get a little more more information, uh, is there one website they go to, or is there a couple of websites that you use? Well, the two different names, same website. There's valleyengineering.com or coverprops.com, but they both come to the same. Same homepage, same website. And where are you physically located? We're in central Missouri, a little town called Rolla. And uh, 100 miles off 544 from St. Louis or 100 miles from Springfield, right on I-44. And if somebody want to get a hold of you by a telephone, we got a number they can reach at? Yes, sir. 573-364-6311. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.